JBN will keep you informed. I'm Michelle Jones. Before we get into the news, please remember to like, subscribe, leave a comment, and to share the news with someone today. Now on to the news. Man killed in knife attack at Linsid Bus Park. The Linsid police have arrested a man in connection with the murder of a teenager who died from stab wounds he received in the town centre on Sunday night. The deceased has been identified as 19-year-old Andrew Carey of Cheesefield District, Linsid St. Catherine. Reports indicate that around 10.30 p.m. on October 6, Carey was among a group of four men who attacked another man inside the bus park during the confrontation. The man was hit in the face and sustained bruises and other injuries. In the ensuing melee, the suspect allegedly stabbed Carey in the chest. Carey was taken to the Linsid Hospital where he succumbed to his injuries following the incident. The suspect turned himself into the police and was taken into custody on suspicion of murder. No motive has been established for Carey's death. The Lindsay Criminal Investigation Branch is currently investigating the matter. Soldier accidentally shoots himself in front of police station. A soldier sustained injuries this afternoon after his rifle accidentally discharged while he was mounting a patrol vehicle parked in front of the Spanish Town Police Station on Burke Road. Colleagues quickly responded, transporting him to the nearby Spanish Town Hospital for medical attention. As of now, the soldier's condition remains unknown and authorities have not released further details regarding the extent of his injuries. Denham Town Police lock up detainee dies at hospital. An investigation has been launched into the death of 23-year-old Michael Adams, a detainee from Lancaster District, Portland, who died while hospitalized. Adams, who was facing murder charges, was escorted from the Denham Town Police Station to the Kingston Public Hospital, KPH, on Friday, October 4, after exhibiting health concerns. He was admitted for medical treatment, but was found unresponsive at approximately 12.30 p.m. on Monday. Despite efforts to revive him, it was pronounced dead shortly thereafter. This incident marks the fourth case of a detainee dying in police custody within the past two weeks, raising concerns about the conditions and the treatment of individuals in custody. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is actively probing the circumstances surrounding Adam's death to determine the factors that led to his hospitalization and a subsequent passing. St. James Man charged with girlfriend's murder, the Trelawney police have formally charged 49-year-old Sherman Sterling with the murder of his girlfriend, 32-year-old Sandria Williams, whose body was discovered on April 5 along Holland Road in Trelawney. Sterling, a resident of Salt Spring Road in the Quarry District of St. James, faces multiple charges, including possession of unauthorized ammunition, possession of a prohibited weapon, and the use of a prohibited weapon to commit a felony. Investigations were carried out and forensic data connected Sterling, who was her boyfriend, to the murder. On Monday, a question and answer session was carried out with Sterling in the presence of his attorney and he was charged. His court date is being finalized. 27 foreign nationals arrested so far over dangerous drugs. The Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF, is reporting that 27 foreign nationals were arrested between January and September for breaches of the Dangerous Drugs Act. The JCF says the arrests were made by the Farms and Narcotics Investigation Division and up on dot locations, such as at the island's airports. The successful interception of these foreign nationals sends a strong message that Jamaica will not tolerate drug trafficking, the JCF said. One of the latest arrests happened on Monday, September 30, when a 54-year-old British man was taken into custody at the Sangster Airport over the discovery of a white powdery substance resembling cocaine hidden in false compartments in two pairs of zippers in his luggage. The police investigations are ongoing and the charges will be laid against the man soon. They noted that this latest seizure follows the August 16 arrest of two British nationals at the same airport. The door was reportedly found with 14 pounds of cocaine concealed in packages disguised as porridge mixes and coffee. The police said the swift action that led to the arrest of persons demonstrates the effectiveness of the JCF in disrupting illicit drug trafficking and highlights the crucial work of the Farms and the Narcotics Investigation Division in combating illicit drug trade and securing the nation's borders. Teenagers stopped with several charges of the alleged shootout with police. Two teenagers have been served with charges under the Firearms Act after they reportedly engaged lawmen in a shootout at the intersection of 4th Avenue and 1st Street in Newport West, Kingston in August. Charged with two counts of shooting with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon, using a firearm to commit a felony, and possession of unauthorized ammunition, are 19 year olds Jaheem Webb, otherwise called Home, and Tyrese Ramon, both of Kingston 13 addresses. 
Reports are that, about 10.30 p.m. on Thursday, August 15, 2024, Webb and Ryman allegedly committed a robbery on Linders Road in Kingston. According to the police, the vehicle in which they were traveling was spotted, and the driver of the motor vehicle was signaled to stop, however, he disobeyed. The police said the vehicle was pursued, and the teens opened fire at the lawmen. After the shooting subsided, it was discovered that Webb and Ryman escaped, leaving the vehicle behind, the police said. On Sunday, October 6, an operation was carried out during which both teens were apprehended. They were charged after a question and answer session in the presence of their attorney on Monday, October 7. Their court date is being finalized. PMP caretakers call for urgent repair of Pedro River Bridge. Opposition People's National Party caretakers in Clarendon and St. Anne are urging the government to prioritize the repair of the bridge in Pedro River. They say the continued inaccessibility of the bridge is contributing to an increased financial burden for residents. PMP caretaker for St. Anne Southeastern, Dr. Kenneth Russell, is calling for immediate action to repair the bridge which links Clarendon and St. Anne. The bridge was down during a truck crash in August and has been impossible since. Dr. Russell said residents have been forced to detour, resulting in increased transportation costs and extended travel times. The inability to go directly from Pedro to Kellitz is severely affecting families who need timely access to essential services. Residents now spend nearly 50% more on transportation as they have to take multiple taxis. They travel to the center and end, walk across the Broken Bridge, and then take another taxi to, to the, from the Clarendon side. This situation with the rains and no place to wait is untenable. It needs urgent action. Meanwhile, Wavell Hines, caretaker for Clarendon Northern, has urged the National Works Agency and Member of Parliament Dwight Sibley's to address the issue with urgency. We are appealing for a temporary patching of the alternate route to ensure smoother and faster travel for residents. The situation is untenable and prompt action is required to alleviate further hardship for those affected. In the common investigator's testimony led to test exchanges in Keith Clark trial, a forgetful witness, Text to exchanges between the defense and Crown, along with partial disclosure allegations, led to an early adjournment in the Keith Clark murder trial on Monday. Three Jamaica Defense Force soldiers, Lance Corporals Greg Tingling and Odell Buckley, and Private Arnold Henry are charged with the accountant's May 27, 2010 murder. On Monday, Tanisha Wisdom Banton, former acting director for complaints and investigation at the Independent Commission of Investigations Indicom, was drilled during cross-examination on whether she knew about helicopter footage on the night in question, how many statements she prepared and who assisted and or gave her directives on how to handle and prepare her findings, among other matters. Noting the considerable time that has passed since Clark's killing, along with the fact that it was her first investigation into a fatal incident for Indicom, Wisdom Banton repeatedly responded with I don't recall to questions posed on the stand, eliciting chuckles in the courtroom, she agreed with the defense that it was after the commencement of the trial that she gave a statement. In the course of your investigation, did you come to find out that there was a video produced by a helicopter that was flying over at the premises on the day in question? Asked defense attorney Valunita Robertson, who was representing Tingling. I don't recall, Wisdom Banton said. You didn't see a letter in a document written to the DPP indicating that the army had a video of what was transpired on the ground on that day. Nita Robertson asked. I don't recall a letter. No, ma'am, Wisdom Banton said. A video of what was happening on the ground would have been very useful and instructive to you as the investigating officer. Yes? But did you know about it? Nita Roberts asked. Yes, ma'am. I don't recall having that letter, Wisdom Banton said. She went further when pressed to say she took her instruction from former Indicom Commissioner Terence Williams. She had earlier told the court that she could not recall when last they spoke. Dwayne Green, who, along with Senior Deputy Director of Public Prosecutions, Jeremy Taylor, KC, and Latoya Bernard, is representing the Crown, Objected to the repeated questions about the helicopter video, she said she had not seen. Justice Dale Palmer said nothing was wrong with the questions, as the helicopter was used in evidence in the Crown's case. The witness was next asked whether she saw the medical reports of the soldiers who were shot on the day. No, ma'am, Wisdom Banton replied. What an investigator. Are you telling me that the officers at the ODPP did not inform you of that? Nita Roberts asked. She was, however, cautioned by Palmer that the questions were inviting hearsay. Green also requested that Nita Robertson tread carefully, so as not to use the word soldiers loosely, because the injuries mentioned were not related to the accused men before the court. I didn't mention the three. If I wanted to, I would have, Nita Robertson said, adding that four soldiers were reportedly shot. 
Wisdom Banton, however, said that if she had knowledge of the gunshot injuries to four soldiers, that would be important to her investigation in terms of the firearms used to inflict the injuries. Did you, in the course of your investigation of this matter, receive any information regarding the deceased Mr. Clark's firearm and whether it was used on the night of the 27th of May 2010? Nita Roberts asked. I don't recall. The investigation was a long one. I don't recall, Wisdom Banton said. You don't recall, Nita Robertson said, adding that Wisdom Banton was not being honest, especially about the helicopter. The Crown objected, however, Palmer said it would seem relevant to the proceedings, or at least to the defendant's case, as to steps she did or did not take and why. It seems relevant that she be asked about steps she took in her investigation. Wisdom Banton said in the Compiprator report, which is put together by its legal department from files she submitted. She also told the court that her former boss, Williams, gave her instructions on who to interview. At the time, you were a senior investigating officer for this matter. So appointed you a senior investigator with responsibility for this particular case. And you accepted that appointment? Nita Roberts asked. Yes, at the time, Terence Williams, that was my role at in the commoner hall for the case, Wisdom Banton said. There was then another round of taxi exchanges between Nita Roberts and Taylor. Palmer intervened and begged the parties not to go down that road. The cross-examination continued until it hit a crossroads when Wisdom Banton told the court that she made two statements. As a senior investigator, you were not of the view that what you did in this matter was to be disclosed in your statement. Everything that you did that is relevant, Nita Roberts asked. Yes, ma'am, Wisdom Banton said. Were you advised what your statement should contain? Nita Roberts asked. All advice came from Mr. Williams during the investigation, Wisdom Banton said. Nita Robertson reminded Wisdom Banton that you wrote a statement in July 2024 at the request of the ODPP. We do not have any statement from Ms. Wisdom in relation to her role as investigating this matter, and I would therefore pause at this stage, my lord, Nita Robertson said. The matter was adjourned, and the Crown said it would seek to locate the document and serve. My lord, I can't speak to what Council has or does not have in her possession. Our record is that it was disclosed. However, we are willing to research again and serve it back on Council, Taylor said. Buckley is represented by Peter Champagne Casey and Henry's attorney is Linton Gordon. The JBN will keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.